Number 18, Argon. Element collecting can be very educational and a lot of fun. In a previous video, I explained how I assembled a periodic table that allows a nice display of the elements. In this video, I'll describe some of the educational aspects of the display, show some of the new elements I've collected. I'll also show how I've addressed safety concerns for poisonous or otherwise potentially dangerous elements. From an educational standpoint, the display has proven to be very interactive. These seventh graders are locating elements Come. on the table. Eureka! I'm rich. Gold. Another great educational feature is this. When you see all the elements displayed together, it's impressive that most of the elements are silvery or silvery gray metals. This relates to the way the electrons in these elements interact with light. I used to imagine calcium as a white element, given its presence in teeth, bones, and milk, but it too is a silvery colored metal. The lanthanides, also called the rare earth elements, are visually almost identical silvery metals. They do differ in chemical and magnetic properties, however. I like the oxidized color of this bismuth crystal, but bismuth, in pure form, is also a silvery metal. Density differences between elements can also be seen in the display, especially by observing size differences in one ounce coins of magnesium, tungsten, titanium, copper, and silver. Lithium, the lightest of the metals, floats in water or mineral oil, while sodium is denser than mineral oil and sinks. I didn't plan to collect the noble gases since they are all clear gases and seemed rather boring. Uh, but they are very interesting if you get the gases near the electricity of a plasma ball. Plasma balls themselves contain the noble gases and here you see a sample of helium glowing blue and neon glowing orange. Although I have elemental europium, I've recently collected several colors of europium-based phosphorescent compounds. Now, these are especially interesting in the dark when stimulated by UV light. Carbon is one of my favorite elements. It takes on many different forms. A few years ago, it was discovered that carbon can form single atom thick, stable sheets called graphene. This material is far stronger than steel and has many exciting possibilities for use. I'm hoping to get a small sample of this material by using sticky tape to lift sheets of graphene from a graphite block. When collecting reactive, poisonous, or radioactive elements, there are three guidelines I follow. First, I don't collect the very dangerous elements. If I do collect, I collect only very small quantities, and I use at least a double containment of the sample. For example, I don't collect cesium, an element that can catch fire in humid air. I don't collect the halogens fluorine or chlorine, both of which are highly reactive and poisonous. Instead, I substitute calcium fluoride or fluorite and sodium chloride as compounds containing the element. One way to contain some elements is to encase them in clear plastic. I've used this to safely contain my sample of arsenic. Agatha Christie's novels featured thallium as the poisoner's poison. I located a very small sample of thallium sealed in glass, and I've further contained it in plastic. Radium is a highly radioactive element with a tragic history. During the early 1900s, watch dials were painted with radium-containing luminous paint. Many radium workers who often licked their brushes died or were severely injured. My watch hand is sealed in glass and further enclosed in plastic. If one gets very close to the sample, a radiation level 20 times higher than 
background can be seen. Uh, for comparison, this level of radiation is comparable to that from cosmic radiation at 36,000 feet. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll always stay interested in science.